long, long time ago it was. Before people began to dwell in the sky. A terrible war was waged between us humans and the wicked god. After the horrendous battle, our ancestors entombed the wicked god and left the polluted and barren earth to find their future in the sky. Things that people mustn't touch. Who cares? Ha! The god of demise and destruction, the cursed power of Mar Petru. The end, Magnus? Never heard of that before. so busy. I've been waiting. Finish him. He will inflict a catastrophe upon the Empire. Let us trust Just the young one more who hold the spirit within them. No! Only such a battle no! will fill the void within you and soothe the agony inside. From when did you know? Gibbery! No dead weight! No way! Yeah. Only hope the lost ocean. Awaken! Oh, God of the past! <laughs> now! Be what you ought to be! Someday you will know what you are meant to be. And with that, welcome everybody to a brand new Let's Play of Let's Play Botan Kaidos, Eternal Wings and the Lost Ocean. This is by far one of my absolute favorite games of all time. This, this franchise means a lot to me. It really helped me shape my taste in RPGs in general. It, it was kind of my first true, like, kind of reason why I love RPGs now today. It, it, this is the RPG that really kind of made me dive deep into the pool when it comes to the RPG genre. And it's kind of a unique one. Um, this was on the GameCube back in 2004, I believe. But, um, you know, <laughs> this is the HD version that came out last year. I'm playing the HD version. Um, this game is a turn-based RPG that uh, uses cards in order to use attacks and whatnot. Uh, but I'll get into more about that l later. This is a really interesting story, and I love it to death. And I just wanted to give you guys a chance to, you know, show this game off, because... Uh, this game means a lot to me. Uh, <laughs> next to Golden Sun, I hold this kind of really near and dear to my heart. So, without further ado, let's go on to the new game. Um, unlike <laughs> the intro you watched, this game is not in English. It uh, The HD version is not in English. It is a sub. Um, but I will be talking over the commentary of the of the the text that spirit seems to like you if you could bond with it something wonderful may happen to you Uh, hello. Can I... May I ask you your name? And we get to name this spirit. 
we as the player are playing the role of a guardian spirit inhabiting this young man named Callus. For the sake of uh, this let's play, I'm going to be naming the spirit after myself. Because at least, uh, I know there's another thing in the series, if you've played the other game in the series, a lot of people probably want me to use that name, but I'm not going to because I don't really like doing that. I like to being referred to as my actual name, so I'm going to go ahead and put my actual name as the Guardian Spirit name. Matthew. So, that's your name. It seems in this world, people have wings, just like, you know, birds and stuff like that. They have wings on their back. It's called the wings of the heart. But Callus is a special person. He only has one. And as you can see, his house is being burned down. He escaped with his brother. Come free us from a thousand years of darkness, a millennium of solitude and suffering. Beautiful white wings for you. For the world, death and destruction. <laughs> And yet we awake in this village here. <clears throat> Arg. Where am I? Arg. My head. Ah, I see you've awakened. How do you feel? Who are you? Why am I here? My name is Larry Kush. I'm the village doctor here, Subal Rai. They found you lying unconscious in the woods nearby and brought you here. Oh yeah, I remember now. I was attacked by rock cats. Oh man. How stupid of me. You're lucky those were only rock cats. They are herbivores after all. It's awfully strange to hear of them attacking humans. The animals in that forest have been acting quite peculiar lately. Not sure why, but they're much more aggressive than they used to be. You better stay away from those woods. By the way, what do you call yourself? I don't recall seeing you around these parts. My name's Callus. This is my first time here, which is why I got lost, I guess. Callus, is it? Welcome to Sebel Rai Village, boy. It looks like you took quite a blow to the head, so I was worried you might have amnesia. But you seem to be fine. If you feel up to it, you're welcome to take a look around the village. We're only a small farming community on the frontier, so I'm afraid there isn't much to see. By the way, I left your winglet over by the window. Quite an unusual design for a winglet. I must say, different from those used by the Empire. 
It was handcrafted by my grandfather. He was an excellent engineer. Ah, I see. Your grandfather. Very impressive. And how is he doing? He died two years ago. Is that so? I'm sorry to hear that. Well, thanks for the help, Doc. I owe you one. Actually, I'm not the one you should be thanking. Mimai is the one who found you lying in the woods and carried you here. I see. Mimai, was it? Now Callus has got his winglet back. So yeah, like I said, Callus has a wing, but he, he only has one compared to everybody else who has two. Well, that should do it. Let's get going. So now we finally have control of Callus. <laughs> um, you can move around with the control stick. Uh, this is kind of his default, you know, running speed. There's no way to make him faster, unfortunately. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, you can go around and kind of look around in the houses. Every time you come a clo close to some something that has an exclamation mark above Callus's head, you investigate it. It says the wooden box can't be open. I really suggest you make it a habit when you go into NPCs' houses to look in every, for every nook and cranny of that house because you'll find items like this. You obtain a Magnus, a shish kebab small. That's a healing item, and it's really good that we got it real early in the game. Uh, Magnus uh, are the items in this game. Magnus, Magnus is the essence of items trapped in cards, and you use these cards for just about everything. You can put everyday objects in these cards, and everything can be extracted to Magnus. Medical tools are confusing charges st stored here. Uh, yeah, you can come up to NPCs and talk to them with by pushing A. It says, after you thank me, th thank me, my, will you visit the village mayor's house? He seemed concerned about you. Sure thing, Larry Kush. Oh, you must be the traveler they found unconscious in the woods. You should ask me for advice if you want better luck in the future. <laughs> what should we ask her about, Matthew? Yeah, he's talking to you. You are the guardian spirit. He, you inhabit his his soul, and he asks you from time to time what you think. And this is kind of your tutorial of things to do around the uh, around the world, and essentially Magnus consumption. In general, Magnus can be divided into two types: Magnus used in battle and Magnus used in the camp menu. A battle Magnus can be used an infinite number of times. On the other hand, a camp Magnus can only be used a single time. So you need more careful when be more careful when using them. An adventuring tip: if you need to recover HP, it makes more sense to do so during battle than in camp. Using a battle Magnus instead of camp Magnus can recover your HP without losing any Magnus. Of course, using battle Magnus is a little riskier, but making good use of them is important. Earning money: defeating enemies won't earn you a single gold coin. Yeah, that's that's something different about this game. Beating up monsters doesn't give you any money. <laughs> Given the poor street value of lost most Magnus, trying to earn money by selling them isn't realistic either. The way to go if you want to get big bucks is to sell photographs. Photographs can only be taken during battle and are a bit risky, but well shot photo will fetch you a lot of gold. Yeah, that's the only only true way you can earn money. Photos aren't worth holding on for a long time. You should always check and see if you have any to sell when you visit Magnus shops. Be careful not to be anxious to sell your photos. Unless you let the photos develop and let their colors come out fully, they won't fetch their full values. Taking a good photo that you can sell at a high price requires both skill and determination. Photos of fast-moving enemies are often out of focus. Photos taken within the light too bright tend to be washed out. Combine light and dark attacks and wait for the right shutter moment. 
When practice and some luck, you'll be taking photos in pro like no time. That's a whole mechanic I don't really do myself because, well, it's it's nice, but it doesn't really help very much. Collection. In the camp menu, there's an option called Collection. All Magnus cards that you come across are automatically registered to the collection. To register a Magnus in the collection, you don't actually need to obtain it. Once you've seen the Magnus in some form, it will automatically be added. For example, Magnus cards that you can see in shops are registered in the collection even if you don't actually buy them. And then Dr. Larry Cush. The entire village is thankful we had Dr. Larry Cush. If we found if he we had found you back in the old days. <laughs> so you want to know more about the Dr. Larry Cush, the man who saved your life? Well, I can't tell you much about him right now. Come back in a little little while when you're done with work. And that's it. So we got a little bit of information about that. If you push the uh, X button on the Switch controller, yeah, this is your camp menu. Uh, you can build a deck. Uh, this is what you battle with. And you can kind of see all the kind of Magnus you have here. You have Attack Magnus, which are indicated by the swords. You have Defense Magnus, indicated by the armor. And you got a camera, which t lets you take photographs. As well as some healing items. Uh, everyday items are stored in here, and they can be used to heal your character. So, not a further ado, let's go on into the next outside of the house here. And we get to see the beautiful, beautiful scenery of Selvarai. That's one thing I really love about this game. It's just the gorgeous backgrounds. It is really, really nice for, you know, a game that relies on, uh, uh, what is the term called? Uh, like, 2D backgrounds, and you're just moving around on a 2D plane, essentially. It's kind of like, it's... It, it's really, really nice and pretty. I always love that about this game. Talk to this dude. Hey, what's with that thing that has got strapped on your left shoulder? Is that a winglet? Yes, it is. Well, I'll be. They say the Empire has tons of them. But you rarely see any down here in the boonies. But it looks a little strange. It's custom built. My grandfather made it for me. I didn't realize it was so rare. Dr. Larry Kush asked me about it too. Really? The doc asked you? I didn't know he had an interest in winglets. He never struck me as the type that enjoys fiddling with ma Machina. You've only got the left one on. Is the other one being repaired or something? No, one is enough. I don't have a left wing. So my grandfather crafted this winglet for me as a replacement. Oh, I see. That's why. Um, sorry for meddling. No problem. It works perfectly fine. And together, they get me where I want to go. That's good to hear. Your grandfather must be an excellent engineer. I mean, it's custom-made winglet. Wow. Yeah, he'd make a fix to all sorts of things. You could almost say he was a magician. <laughs> so we get a little bit of backstory about Kalos and his grandfather. We got a bunch of ducks here. Fantail ducks, as these uh, creatures are called. <laughs> Talk to the lady. Oh, up and all re around already, are we? I'm not surprised Dr. Larry Kush could cure just about any injury or ailment in no time at all. You know what? Now that you're feeling better, why don't you see see the village mayor? It seems there's something he's itching to tell you. Okay, well, let's go do that here. Uh, let's investigate these barrels here. It says these barrels appear to be empty now. Well, tuh, so much for that. These barrels appear to be empty now. Hey, wait. You must be the guy they found unconscious in the woods. How are you going to make it as an adventure if you keep fainting during all your travels? Hey, are you trying to pick a fight or something? What are you trying to say there, huh? Whoa, calm down there. I just give you some advice so you fare better from now on. During your travels, have you ever thought, wish I hadn't lost that battle, or if only I was stronger? 
That's if that's the case, then you might want to learn more about this blue flower next to me. They say the flower records the memories of travelers who step in its embrace. I've also heard of travelers being transported to a mysterious church and returning stronger than before they entered. To tell you the truth, I haven't tried the flower myself. But still, I thought I would tell you about its sincere and adventure and all. These mysterious flowers exist throughout the world. It'd be wise to make good use for them. I see. We'll check it out later. Oh, by the way, in addition to the blue flowers, there's also red flowers. The red ones only let you save your journey's progress. If you ever are unsure, take a look at the help in the system section of the camp menu. Yeah, so these are your save points. This is how you. This is the only way you can save in this game is by going into the flower and you know, push a gay. Did you know this, Mister? Everyone has wings of the heart, right? The wings of the heart outwardly express what people are feeling on the inside, their hopes and dreams. That's why my father, what my father told me, that's why there's so many different types. The unique shapes and colors are just reflecting each person's hopes and dreams. So yeah, that's what I was talking about earlier about how everybody has wings in this world. But we got some more stuff here. Hey, you're the one Mimi saved, right? Glad to see you're up and walking around. Squeak, squeak! <laughs> Whoa, is that him? Her? Me, my? Is this who brought me here? Uh huh. Me, is really cool. He's way smarter than all the drunks you see around here, and helpful, too. I see. Well, thanks, Me, my. I owe you one. Squeak. I love me, my. That creature is called a Greythorn. Greythorns are kind of the mascot of the series of Botan Kaidos. And me, my here is probably my favorite one. <laughs> it looks like a little whale. It's cute. And I love it. <laughs> Thanks, me, my. <laughs> squeak, 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 squeak. All they can do is say is squeak. <laughs> he looks happy, doesn't he? <laughs> but yeah, that's that's pretty much that. Let's talk to you. Good day to you. Don't let the rural surroundings mislead you. We only carry magnets of the utmost quality. Remember, a magnus is created by extracting the magnet essence of an object from its physical property and sealing it in a card. How would you feel, feel if you opened up a magnus? And the object crumbled in your hands. You wouldn't be too happy, my friend. Am I right? Never forget rule number one. Buy your Magnus from a decent source, from people you can trust. In other words, us. Our Magnus are fresh as can be. Believe me, our goods will satisfy. You're a lucky man, as we're currently having a sales promotion. Prices don't get any cheaper than this. Come on in, come on in, take a look, take your pick. So this is pretty much your tutorial for going to shops. You come into this house here. You'll be greeted by this woman. Says, hi there. You know, she's, she runs a shop. Uh, this also, you know, plays as an inn. Rest your wings is staying the night and healing yourself. So, you know, and it's totally free. You do not sp spend any money at inns in this game. If you go to a magnet shop and just rest your wings, you're automatically healed. You don't have to spend any money to sleep. But if you look at the shop here, you can buy or sell. And you can buy more Magnus cards to put in your deck and whatnot. Uh, the, sp the shish kebabs are uh, camp Magnus, so you can only use them in the camp menu. And uh, you, you can kind of tell which ones it... it if an item has a number next to on the top corner, that is a battle Magnus. If it doesn't have any number, that's a camp menu Magnus. That would kind of help you kind of get an idea of which one's which. We'll be getting into more detail about the battle mechanics here in a little bit. Probably next episode because 
<laughs> most of this episode. It's just going to be doing tutorials, though. But uh, let's talk to this woman up here. She said, this village is boring. I'm fed up with being surrounded by kids and the elderly. I wish I lived in Furcad. Oh, where's that kind, wealthy gentleman who's going to sweep me off my feet and take me to Furcad? <laughs> Whatever you say, lady. Uh, let's talk to this lady. She seems important. Are you a traveler too? You can tell she's important because she has a has a has a portrait <laughs> in, the, in the text box. I came here to see the ancient ruins and the ne what's nearby near here. How about you? Me? Well, I. I have to go. Bye, little guy. See ya, Mimai. Mimai looks sad. <laughs> I have a name, you know. C E D R. Cedar. They're crazy, huh, Mimai? Why bother going all the way down to see some old stupid old ruins? Nobody in this village will ever go, even go near those woods. They say it's cursed or something. I hope they don't get jumped by wild animals out there. Like someone else did. Yeah, really. <laughs> Ancient ruins and Moongal forest, huh? Why don't we have a look ourselves? Sure, let's go do that. But I have to do a couple other things before we do any before we leave to, to the forest. Like we need to investigate some things. Talk to this lady says, "I'll make some of my delicious cream stew. I need milk. Milk. Where's the milk? Oh no, I'm out of milk. Drat! I have to keep an eye on the pot." If only there was someone who could bring me milk from the stable. Well, we'll find that out later. Dishes are lined up neatly, but a few stains remain on them. Scrubby, scrubbing carefully, not to be, must not be here forte. <laughs> I'm coming here to investigate. You see many books, cream stew tip, tippets, especially Rell Red. Become the perfect wife. You flip open the wrapping page, listen and obey your husband's every whim. Yikes. Yeah, I kind of feel that way too. <laughs> it's like, yikes. Hello there. Let me guess, you're the young man who found they found and brought in the doctor to look at, correct? I know he, it's exciting to travel on your own. It's very important to be cautious in the foreign land. Your family must be worried sick about you. Last thing you want to worry the ones you love the most. Please go back to them. Well, to tell you the truth, I don't have anyone to go back. They're all gone. I'm sorry to hear that, but if that's the case, you really need to keep your eyes open. Because I know there's someone in this world, someone who is waiting for you. Waiting? Waiting for me? Yes, indeed, someone who needs you. And someone you will come to need. That someone, somewhere in this world, is living day by day, just as you are. Neither of you know how important you are to each other yet. In time, you will come to know, such is the way of the world. You'll understand when the time comes. By the way, why don't you take this with you? It's one of my special recipes. Don't be bashful. You obtain the Magnus Shish Kebab, medium. So that heals a little bit more than the small shish kebab. Oh, uh, thank you. You're most welcome. Remember, be cautious and take care of yourself, young man. <laughs> we get a lot of life lessons from that lady here. <laughs> There's something in the drawer. 
You obtained the Magnus Dark Flare level 1. We can't use that Magnus yet, but we will have a use for it later. The drawer is filled to the limit with clothes. Not a sock can fit. Can fit. See, like I said, it is very important to just go and check everybody's house because you never know what you're going to find. And especially, especially for something, because I forgot to mention, since, you know, I'm let's playing this, if you look at the collection here, there's over a thousand Magnus in this game. And we're going to be collecting every single one. And a lot of them are missable. So we need to make sure we check everybody's houses. And other things. I'll make I'll make note of what Magnus are missable. So I will be going over that much later. Uh, we'll be looking at the menu other menu items later. This is a sweet yet sour smell wash your way in the barrel. <laughs> uh, let's go up here to this house. This house is very important. I'm over here, uh, I'll ransack your house first. Um, here's a, and it says, says, flames are crackling away. If we had some kind of container, we'd be able to carry this. Let's leave it for now. Yeah, we could carry fire, but we don't have the items yet to carry that. There's something wedged in between the books. You obtain the Magnus Fire Burst level one. Like I said before, like the Dark Burst, we do not have, um, a way to use it yet. We will be getting it here soon. Oh, I just saw something funny. Underwear is folded neatly. <laughs> a nicely tidy underwear. Everyone's talking about you. A young traveler found in serious trouble in the Forbidden Forest. Don't mind the smaller stories. This is a small village. Even the small happening is big news here. All right, let's talk to this guy. This is the mayor of uh, Subalrai. Oh, you're finally awake. Yes, sir. I guess I caused you some trouble. I let my guard down and then, well, sorry about all this. Don't worry about what already happened, young fellow. Feel free to stay in the village and heal your runes for as long as you need. However, I must strongly insist that you never go near Moonguile Forest again. I've heard rumors of meddlers from Furcad snooping around that forest without permission. <laughs> Neither you nor those blockheads understand the Moon Gile Forest must not be disturbed. An ancient, hideous monster sleeps slumbers deep in the, within the forest. These days, even the forest animals seem uneasy. Now is the time to me now is not the time to meddle in places you do not belong. All right, sir. I'll try to heed your warning. No, not really. I mean, my squeak, squeak. Of course, it's going to be the same thing that we just said earlier when we talked to Mimai earlier. Mimai's just following us. We're going to check one last place, and that's here in the stable. This stable is going to be a very uh, <laughs> interesting place here. As you can see, the frame rate's kind of taking a tank here. I don't know why. I think it's just because there's so many characters in this in this area here. This Prancer is sensitive about the weather. He's grown weak from Sadal Sud's heat. He lived in cooler climate. I'm sure he'll recover, but what can I do? We're going to be coming back to that prancer later. Take a look behind you. Those prancers sure are something, right? Common horse is no match for this standout strength. <laughs> Talk to this lady. Oh, hello. It's a fine day today, isn't it? I hope you don't get it doesn't get too much hotter. If it gets too hot, the pals will become fatigued and lazy. If that happens, their meat will get fatty and unmarketable. We can't afford poor, poor POW sales during the season. Yeah, this is a POW. A <laughs> combination between a uh, a pig and a cow. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, Bob and Kytos has got kind of weird creatures. The milk and eggs produced here are sold east of the village of Furcad. With the money in the sales, we can buy goods in the city. That's the way of life here in Subway. This lady here that we just talked to, I forgot to mention. It says woman with bracelet. Please keep that in mind because whenever you see somebody with a bracelet, that's going to be involved in a side quest, quest later in the game. So just keep that in mind, please. <laughs> For your own sanity. See that girl there? She's probably daydreaming about fur cat even now as she milks that pal. She, may, she might be smitten by fair, fair fur cat, but she is an amazing pal milker. It's kind of ironic, I think. And talk to this lady here. Anna. 
Oh, you must be a traveler. I bet you're from Furcad, right? Isn't that village boring? I mean, there's nothing to do here. Oh, how I long for Furcad. Ancient capital stone, jewel of the east, city of my hopes and dreams. Outsiders might not see what's so special about a small city on the frontier island. But I can hardly wait each week for the day when we sell our wares to the city. One of these days, I'm going to run into a lord in the street, or maybe a young wealthy merchant. Then our eyes will meet, and it'll be love at first sight. Uh, how romantic! I can hardly wait. Put those wings away, lady! Oh, stop it! You're daydreaming again. Such silly thoughts won't get the pals milked. Even if you do run into someone like that, heaven knows what he'd do to a country girl like you. He'd play with your head and leave you the moment he finds another young girl. Just because you, we have wings doesn't mean we should be fluttering on some childish dreams. Pinch, plant your feet firmly on the ground and take careful steps. Slowly but surely, that's the way of our life in the vill this village. I know, I know. But everyone likes to flutter on about romantic dreams at my age. Alright, honey. You can dream all you want once you finish your chores. Uh, work, work, work. What a drag. Back to the pal milking. <laughs> and that's pretty much everything I want to kind of show off in Subway Riot at the moment. I know we didn't really get to do very much, but well, there's a lot to do. Um, as you can tell, it's an RPG. It's kind of chatty. So we're going to go over here. If you come over to the flower, you can have options if it's a blue flower. You can save your progress or visit the church. Uh, if you go to the visit the church, you'll be transported to a mythical church. <laughs> this church is where you go to level up when you have enough, enough experience points. Yeah, this game doesn't allow you to level up normally like no normal RPGs. If you have enough experience, you come over here and talk to the priest. It says, another adventurer. Do you stand before me in search of greater power? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What are you talking about? I don't get it. Where am I anyway? Those who seek spiritual growth visit the church to pray. If you have earned enough experience through your travels, your prayers will be answered. This may be confusing at first, but I will try to answer any questions you may have. What would you like to know? Ask about increasing levels. Simply winning battles is not enough to increase your various strengths and capabilities. You need to pray before the altar and reflect on your experiences. Only then you will truly learn, and your abilities will improve. This is the only way to realize and fulfill one's true potential. Pray within these hollowed halls. Remember that the power of realization can only be attained through prayer. Visit the church whenever possible to learn of your true powers and abilities. Any other questions? Yes, we'll talk about uh, class up real quick. This is about increasing ca class levels. You will find artifacts in this world, items of great power. Even in Magnus form, these items retain their magic and they will prepare you for even greater ordeals. If you desire to possess such strength, bring me the required Magnus and its inexpressible gift shall be entrusted to you. The power bestowed upon you from these special magnets will be of different quality than that of the normal level up. And that's pretty much that. So we only level up from here. Uh, you can only go by going up to the altar and praying. There is another gentleman down here, but he got a whole big old side quest and I don't mean to talk about it right now. We don't even have an item for the side quest yet. So we'll be talking to him later. But I think I'm gonna call it here. So you come out here, save progress, and this game does have autosave, which the GameCube version did not have. So you just come over here and you create a new file. 
<coughs> and then there you go, you got your save complete there. It's pretty quickly there. But I think we're gonna call it here. So in the next episode of Let's Play Bot and Kaido's Eternal Wings in the Lost Ocean, we are gonna go and adventure into Moongal Forest. With that, I will see you guys in the next episode. Take care, everyone.